Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Wrestling Challenge Review Series. Luckily, Peacock has updated a couple of new Wrestling Challenge uh, episodes. December 13th, 1986 is our episode for this particular moment. If you're new here, we've got a Wrestling Challenge uh, series with about 40 or 50 episodes in it. Audio version, we've got Superstars of Wrestling with over 100 of those. Some of those will be updated today too. And basically 1,300 uh, wrestling-related episodes, both interviews, which we're going to get back to probably in the fall, and uh, reviews of current day and old-school wrestling. Love this project. Uh, also, if you're looking for life coaching or business coaching or relationship coaching, would love to be of service to you. Uh, you can go to our main channel, Golden Opportunities Coaching, for that, if that's something you're into. Uh, Intercontinental Champion Randy Savage is here. Um, he is a couple of weeks off of the major attack on Ricky Steamboat, obviously crushing the larynx of Steamboat. Savage goes around with the enhancement talent. Here does the, um, double axe handle from the top to the arena floor. Basically does whatever he can. He hits the top rope elbow and Randy Savage proves why at the time he's one of the most devastating individuals alongside, um, alongside him of course is elizabeth but he's there uh promo with the wizard kemshi and kamala uh promising to eliminate hulk hogan from the battlefield of things if you've ever seen um the wizard aka curtis iakea not to be confused with the grand wizard ernie roth uh worth going out of your way to see anyway uh we go to a, a brief interview with um, Jack Tunney, who in confirms that Andre the Giant did not return to his reinstatement hearing. However, Bobby Heenan was there as his representative, um, which Gorilla Monsoon tries to find out a little bit more about, but doesn't really find out anything from Bobby Heenan. Heenan tight lip. Bob Colton, Steve Lombardi up next in an enhancement challenge uh, or enhancement talent match with... Um, Mike Rotundo and Danny Spivey, the returning Danny Spivey, who apparently had been on the shelf uh, as a member of the U.S. Express for about six or seven months. Anyway, um, Rotundo bouncing around here, basic stuff. Lombardi gets a hip toss, but not anything too major. Um, you know, roll through basic stuff there. Not exactly your best uh, potential match. Some splashes and eventually a win for the U.S. Express. Of course, the U.S. Express used to be Barry Wyndham, and, um, but Wyndham leaves in late 85, so Mike Rotundo trying to recreate that here. Uh, Johnny Valiant with the now newly turned heel Dino Bravo. Valiant basically trying to Create the new dream team here, uh, late 86. It doesn't actually happen. Bravo with brown hair, which most of us are used to him with bl the be bleach blonde hair. But um, the insinuation by the uh, interviewer that they may have an involvement with each other gets under the skin of uh, Johnny Valiant. As he says, I'm just managing the man and basically a... Attempted larger push for Dino Bravo is here. Uh, we go to a uh, blackjack on blackjack mulligan on site uh, promo sort of deal here. Um, he's holding a blackjack's sort of, um, I guess you'd say hammer or whatever. Basically says he can take out anybody, including but not limited to mentioning King Kong Bundy. So I guess there's a plan. For Bundy and Heat of Feud. Um, King Harley Race, the king of wrestling, against a young Paul Roma. Roma probably has about maybe at most two years in the ring at this point, maybe two and a half. But uh, uh, he bumps around for Harley Race a bit. They do the comedy spot where Roma goes to the outside and grabs the crown of Harley Race. Race, just before his major feud with the Junkyard dog here that takes them takes him into WrestleMania three. Race had come in, had done a few enhancement to, or 
bump around matches for guys like Pedro Morales at the time. Anyway, big uh, suplex by hanging suplex, almost like a perfect plex. By Harley Race is the main spot of the match, and uh, there that goes. Um, basically, Spivey and um, uh, Rotundo are in white suits or white t-shirts and such, saying they're back toward running towards the tag team championships. Completely dry promo because neither guy really a strong promo. Uh, Jimmy Hart says that he is going to carry the Honky Tonk Man to the next level. That is the announcement that uh, Honky Tonk talked about last week. The alignment with Hart, good for his career, as we all know that uh, Honky Tonk through uh, probably about uh, 1989, one of the top heels. So he has about a two two and a half year run as a top heel in the WWF headlining B-Towns around the globe. Uh, Lanny Poffo, a.k.a. the geni- later the genius, about uh, three years from his genius run against natural Butch Reed. Butch Reed being groomed at the time uh, for big things. Poffo comes up, hops around, and gets a reverse pin attempt. Doesn't get all he, all he wants on that. Reed not really having that good a go of it uh, as the slickster is put with him to give him a little bit of extra added entrance. Uh, hip toss on the arena floor, and Butch Reed gets a win relatively quickly and authoritatively over Poffo at the time. Snake Pit, yeah, as uh, Roddy Piper comes out, and he's only concerned. With the fact that Adrian Adonis is here, the war between the, the Piper's Pit and the Flower Shop had been going on for a while. Piper wanting to get his hands, literally and figuratively, around the neck of Adrian Adonis. Adonis up next with an enhancement talent match after we go to a promise that Outback Jack, the Crocodile Dundee knockoff, is coming to the World Wrestling Federation care of the um, here of the island of Australia, SD Special Delivery Jones is up next in a match that gets cut off uh, by interference from Roddy Piper as Adrian Adonis, managed by Jimmy Hart, is here. Uh, Adonis has maybe a couple of minutes, maybe a minute and a half, two minutes worth of match before Piper reveals himself. What we then see is a disqualification victory and the entire locker room spilling out to um, break up battles between Piper and uh, Adonis. That obviously is there to set up their uh, WrestleMania 3 match. They brawl around on the inside. It takes the entire locker room coming out in a, ho- in a uh, swarm like bees to get things going. Um, Jesse Ventura interviews the Can-Am connection of Martell and Zink. This time, At this time, they're being groomed for a major babyface championship run before Zink leaves, not too terribly far away. Uh, Bob Boyer faces off against Sika. Sika, of course, managed by the Wizard at the time, and he gets about two or three offensive moves in, a couple of punches, com- a couple of chops, but lands with a Samoan drop. And of course, Sika the father of current uh, SmackDown champion Roman Reigns. Um, Then Hulk Hogan basically says that Randy Savage is an affront to professional wrestling for what he's done by putting Ricky Steamboat out, and Hogan offers to uh, wrestle Savage in a eventual match. And that will close us for today. Uh, We'll be back with more right after this.